to give a plug. Um, they fed many of us throughout the session when we needed healthy food the most. And as I stand here, it's tough to not reflect on what the last couple of years have been like. And in fact, at a table right here in this corner, I sat with Representative Tony Wong as he coached me how to give testimony the public hearing, something I'd never done before. But it was that public hearing in 2012 where many of us met and things started to take shape for GMO free CT. And even a year before that, next door in the Fairfield Theater, I saw Dick Roy speak about a bill he was trying to get through that had to do with GMO labeling. And I thought, wow, that's really cool, never knowing that we'd all be standing here today together celebrating the passage of the first in the nation GMO labeling law. And that's due to all of you and all of our amazing legislators that are here, that are not with us, that I wish I could name by name. But um, we have a lot of gratitude here today for all of you and for Governor Malloy, because this is really monumental for our fight to date back our food system in this country. I'm actually very excited to share that as a result of the passage of this bill, two organizations have been formed by the people of GMO Free CT. So we're not going away anytime soon. You'll be hearing about us through Citizens for GMO Labeling, which is actually a national organization on this bottle of juice, and CONFACT, Connecticut Families Against Chemical Trespass, where we will continue to work on getting chemicals out of our food um, and a whole sort of sorts of issues that we all really care about. So it is now my honor and pleasure to introduce my representative, Tony Watt. Thanks, Tara, and, and I'm thrilled to be here because it reflects a passage of a bill that indicates that grassroots, grassroots caring of the people made a difference in the bill. I, I remember sitting here in 2012 thinking about how impossible our dream it was. And, and the reality is the people of this community, the people of this state came out and said that GMO labeling is a fundamental right that we all should have. It is not an issue of right or wrong. It's a fundamental right that we have to know what's in our food system. So I applaud the governor and his passage of this bill in support of it. But at the same time, all the credit in the world goes to the people out there, the people in grassroots that, that told the legislative body and politicians that they matter and they have a voice. So keep that up and, and, and I encourage you to be engaged in this process for people that aren't engaged. Learn about it and be passionate about it because it is your government. You own it. And this is an indication that you do. So thank you for having me here. And I'm here to introduce Representative Kupchak. Okay. Yeah, really quickly, I came in a little later um, into the GMO movement when I met Tara at the uh, legislature, legislative office building, and um, it is, it takes a village. It takes a group of people who really care about something, and that's in all aspects of legislation. It's the people who work really hard to have their voices heard, and it's legislators and governor who listen to the people. So congratulate yourselves, really, because you really did something to me. Congratulations. Uh, introduce uh, Representative Miller. Thank you. <clears throat> well, Thank you, and good morning. It's nice to be here. Uh, if we lived in a perfect world, we'd have federal agencies that would uh, promote and sponsor sustainable agriculture, and uh, we wouldn't see the mass industrial farming that we're now seeing uh, presents problems uh, for us. And um, I can, 10 years ago, remember that there were a few voices uh, tilting at windmills. One of them was Representative Dick Roy, who's with us today. I want to thank you for your work. And I remember uh, about two years ago speaking with the governor and telling him that all of us on the grassroots level and, uh, and those of us who were trying to build momentum had a tough road to hoe and that uh, we were reminded that uh, democracy is government by persuasion, that you have to make the case, and it takes patience and persistence, as, as Dick knows so well. And uh, But I knew that um, we had a friend in our governor because 
even as the mayor of Stanford, he made a national name for himself promoting Head Start and other things that uplift people and protect especially our most vulnerable, like our young people. And uh, so we thought, why not here in Connecticut? And uh, I know that when we were working amongst ourselves in the legislature that it, it, we were sort of joking about it because I know uh, some of our peers might say, oh, here comes Tony Wong again. Oh, he's going to talk about, okay, Tony, I'm learning more. A bunch of my people have spoken to me. Uh, but that's what it takes. And, and that's what David Arconti and Representative Jonathan Steinberg and a number of other people did. And we uh, were able to get some courageous people. Dr. Michael Hansen, who's here, the chief scientist for Consumer Ooh. Union. To, uh, from a science point of view, make the case, and we had to make the case that uh, in any economy, uh, it works best when consumers make educated choice. And so many of us were making the case that we want to be informed, and uh, we needed no better champion than our governor. And so we're very pleased to uh, have Connecticut be the first state to do this. As you know, Maine has followed. We need New York and Massachusetts and other states. He knows the governors. He's going to talk with them. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, our governor, Dan Malloy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I, we also have uh, Representative Camillo over here yes. as well. So we, we, we shouldn't leave him out. Uh, Dick Roy, thank you for uh, uh, your leadership on this issue. To all of the representatives who have been referenced uh, previously, thank you for your, your leadership uh, as well. Uh, this is a beginning, um, and I, and I want to be very clear what, what it is the beginning of. It is the beginning of a national movement uh, that ultimately will require uh, the labeling, I, I'm quite certain, across the nation um, uh, of uh, these foodstuffs so that people actually understand what's in their food. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'm certainly on board, certainly worked with folks to make sure that we could get a piece of legislation first in the nation uh, uh, passed. Uh, but there are some other things that we need to do, and, I, and I'll share uh, 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 my own experience on, on this regard. About 10 years ago, as mayor of the city of Stanford, um, I pushed uh, legislation that banned the cooking of uh, foods uh, with trans fatty acids in the city of Stanford uh, for commercial consumption. Um, long before uh, the federal government did that, just this year. Um, and announced uh, its plans to eliminate uh, uh, the cooking stuffs with, with that. Um, uh, if you think about the organic movement, um, by and large, there was no organic movement uh, in the United States. It was uh, relatively, uh, you were really quite impossible to find organic products uh, for the most part uh, in, in stores and uh, places in, in the United States. But a bunch of concerned people got together and grew that movement. Now, we need that kind of activity um, in GMO. That's what we really need. Uh, we need people on a personal basis to be requiring it. We need to develop that marketplace so that folks that I'm having conversations with, uh, some of the biggest food developers, food handlers, beverage makers uh, in the country, and I, I have sat down and said, hey, listen, this is the time you better get ready uh, because people are coming. Uh, this is a movement that you're not going to stop. Um, and, and I do not apologize for beginning the movement here uh, in the state of, uh, of Connecticut. They get it now, uh, but more activism on state by state, developing that product base, people demanding uh, the availability uh, of those products. I mean, obviously, you know, we, we, we at least have one large purveyor of foodstuffs in, in our communities that, that is uh, very proud of the position that they've taken with GM, uh, GMOs. We need others to join that movement to bring this about um, uh, nationally. Uh, it doesn't do you much good if you're avoiding GMO uh, uh, because it's good because you've decided it's the right decision for you. But you go to another state and your meal or 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 the foods that you would buy there uh, don't have the same labeling. We really want to get this to a national uh, level. But what we also want to see in the interim is to for us to bring along some other states. Uh, and I have talked to my other uh, New England governors and some of the mid governors, and Democratic governors in general, about this issue. I think there's a start. There's a, the beginning of a belief uh, that this is inevitable, um, and uh, not not quite there yet. Uh, we got to push it a little bit further. But once we turn that corner, and I'm not talking about uh, 10 years or 20 years from now, I'm talking about the next few years. Once we turn that corner, this is going to happen substantially uh, more rapidly than any of us might have imagined uh, six months ago. 
right? Okay. So uh, we are making real progress. The legislators should be very proud of what they've accomplished. Uh, the advocates should be very proud of what they've accomplished. But as I said on the day that we uh, first celebrated the passage of this legislation, this is not the time to stop. This is the time to build. That's what it is. Uh, demand it. Demand it uh, uh, everywhere you can. Uh, you go into a grocery store and, and uh, you can't find products properly marked, in your opinion, you need to let the manager know or the owner know. Uh, uh, you're buying a beverage uh, and you can't tell what's in it, you need to let people know. This has got to be a grassroots effort across the country, starting uh, here in the state of Connecticut. With that, I guess I get to sign uh, a, a, uh, some legislation. Are we ready? Yeah.